Mike, Bob, Bob, Mario. Well, we see a little X. All right, let's get let's get started. Uh, let me welcome everyone here, and we've got a number of distinguished people that are here, even with the mask on. I can still recognize. So uh, I see San Jacinto and Texas Southern, U of H Clear Lake, uh, Rice, and uh, I know that uh, Mario is going to introduce people individually, but I certainly want to acknowledge all of these outstanding. Um, colleges and universities that are here. So welcome everyone and thank you for being here for this very special, very special announcement. Today we are once again standing before you and, and the rest of the world uh, to fortify our position as the space city. I'm pleased to announce that the Houston space port will be the place where the world's first commercial space station will be built. Uh, and let me underscore that will be the first place where the world's first commercial space station will be built. And before I go any further, I want to acknowledge the folks on the stage with uh, with me today. Uh, Mike Zafranidi, uh, CEO of Axiom Space, Mario Diaz of the Houston Airport's Director of Aviation, Bob Harvey, President and CEO of the Greater Houston Partnership, and Bob Mitchell, President of the Bay Area Houston Economic Partnership. Uh, one other person I know would be here if he was in uh, present, and that would be Mayor Pro Tem Dave Martin. And I certainly want to acknowledge him because I know this is a special moment for him as well. Uh, you will hear from each one of them in just a moment. I also want to acknowledge the city's uh, chief economic development officer, Andy Eakin, where there's Andy, um, and Brenda Hellyer with San Jacinto College. I uh, want to acknowledge them, and, and then Mario will be introduced in the others. Look, our great city is known for taking on humankind's boldest challenges. In 21, uh, the Houston Spaceport will be the, will be the world's headquarters for Axiom Space, a privately funded aerospace enterprise that will train astronauts and build the Axiom Station. It will be the world's first free flying, internationally available private space station that will serve as humanity's central hub for research, manufacturing, and commerce in low Earth orbit. In just a moment, we will hear more details about Axiom Station and their plans to build a 14-acre headquarters campus at the Houston Spaceport. As mayor, the one thing that I'm proud of is that this partnership will have a lasting impact on our city and is expected to bring more than a thousand high paying jobs in a time when we need them most. From engineers to scientists, mathematicians, and even machinists, this opportunity will energize our workforce, engage our communities, and dare our young students to look up, wonder, and dream. Houston has the workforce to rise to the occasion and, and we also have one of the highest concentrations of engineering talent in the nation with nearly 2,000 engineers per 100,000 workers. We also have NASA just minutes away from the Houston Spaceport. The Johnson Space Center is a $1.5 billion complex that employs more than 11,000 people. And finally, Houston is home to 350 companies that are involved in aircraft or space vehicle manufacturing, research and technology, or other air transportation support activities. Before I hand it over to the next speaker, I want to acknowledge that 2020 has really, really tested us. But make no mistake, uh, this should remind all of us that hope is on our horizon as our city recovers. With that, let me welcome uh, to the podium, the CEO of Axiom Space, Mike Safraniti, to tell us more about the Axiom Space Station and their plans at Houston uh, Space Fort. Mike.
Thank you, Mary, Mayor Turner, very much. It's my honor to be here today uh, to share with you guys um, our, our dream and that uh, dream that we're bringing here to Houston. I can't think of a better way to close out an unprecedented year for all of us uh, than to be here to talk about the future of space uh, and that it starts here uh, in Houston. Axis Space founded with a vision of a thriving home in space that benefits every human everywhere. We often hear that that is a very bold statement, bold vision, and in fact, it is, because we believe that humanity's next great achievement will be in space. Our vision is about facilitating breakthroughs and perspectives so that innovators, governments, and individuals can push their boundaries and achieve space-driven evolutions that can improve life back here on Earth. In order to achieve this vision, we need a talented workforce that can dream big and be bold. Uh, we are closing 2020 with almost 100 employees. We're expecting to rapidly grow to over 1,000 in the next three years as we build our, our, uh, the world's first commercial space station. Last January, uh, even though the year was not uh, great for most of us, uh, we did get selected by NASA to be the only company to be able to uh, build and attach our space station to the International uh, Space Station. That's an unprecedented uh, selection by the agency. We were selected singly with no other competition uh, because our vision was not only bold, but it was uh, technically very strong. And we had a business plan through the next 15 years that showed that it was very possible to commercially have a station be commercially viable. Um, so our, our intention is to uh, build a station uh, that uh, launches the first module in late 2024. Uh, we'll add uh, three modules after that between now and the uh, end of ISS's life on orbit. Uh, when it's determined that it's time to retire the International Space Station, we will separate from the International Space Station and carry on the research and manufacturing that's going on at that point. ISS will be retired and we will become uh, the only presence in space uh, as a commercial provider in low Earth orbit. Um, NASA's selecting uh, Axiom was a critical milestone for our company and it's propelled us to ramp up our talent hiring as we staff engineers, developers, scientists, innovative thinkers to lead our station planning and development. While we are building the action modules, we are, offer offering, we are also offering professional and private astronaut missions to the ISS at a rate of up to two flights per year. And in fact, we announced our first flight, uh, which launches in about a year from now uh, with the first fully private mission uh, to the International Space Station. And we have two more on the books and a third being worked on. So we're really making progress uh, in that regard. Um, the world's first private astronaut crew to fly to orbit for a 10-day mission will live and work on the ISS will usher in a long promised era of human spaceflight, commercial human spaceflight. As the industry's only full service mission provider, Axiom will be responsible for mission planning, astronaut training, life support, medical support, crew provisions, on orbit operations, and overall mission management. In other words, if you want to go to space, we take care of everything you need, just give us a call. As the world looks to 2021 with hopes for rejuvenation, I believe what Axiom has in the works will contribute something very significant to that story. We are proud to be a part of the strong Houston community, bringing together diverse talent to set the agenda for the future of commercial space. Uh, in closing, I'll just say we're very excited about our new home at the Houston uh, Spaceport. It's the nation's 10th commercially licensed spaceport. The Houston Spaceport is managed and operated by Houston Airports. And so I'd like to take this moment to welcome uh, the director of Houston Airports, Mario Diaz, uh, for his remarks. Thank you, Mike. Um, we are looking forward to an incredible partnership, and we are excited about the Axiom Station and what it means to humanity. I want to thank Mayor Turner, and I want to thank our Chief Development Officer of the City, Andy Ickin, for their leadership. Uh, I also want to acknowledge Bob Harvey, 
um, and Bob Mitchell, both of whom saw the value in this partnership and worked hard to make it a reality. I also want to acknowledge Brenda Hellyer. Brenda, please, uh, with San Jacinto College, who is developing the next generation workforce at Houston Space Sports Edge Center. I'm also looking forward to further developing our educational opportunities. It's very, very important that we focus on education, not on the, the theoretical, but on the actual practical technical uh, aspects of education and partnership opportunities for the Houston Spaceport. And, um, and so with us today, we have Dr. David Alexander of uh, Rice University, who has been with us from day one and has been such a partner in really um, spreading the word and help us market the this, this spaceport. Uh, Dr. Alexander, thank you so much. Um, we also have um, with us the president of Texas Southern University, uh, Dr. Kenneth Hewitt. Please, Dr. Um, we are definitely partnering with Tech Southern because we have so many opportunities for the students of Tech Southern. And of course, we have Dr. Ira Blake of the University of Houston Clear Lake. We promise Dr. Blake that we are gonna make this happen and we're so happy to be able to stand here today and say, we've delivered, we need to go further and, um, and, and, and take it even further beyond today and, and, and the amazing um, announcement that we have. Uh, but before I start my remarks, um, I would also like to take this opportunity to thank my team at the Houston um, Airport System, especially Arturo Machuca, who is the general manager, not only of Ellington Airport, but now he's got double duty. He's now the general manager of the Houston Spaceport. Arturo, thank you so much. Uh, we have Ian Wadsworth, who is our chief commercial officer, who is not here. We have Molly Waits, I think Molly is here, who is our chief development, I mean our chief um, of marketing, air service development and, com and communications. Molly, thank you so much. And Janet Schaefer, who is the director of airline affairs and real estate. I can tell you without them, without their commitment, without their dedication, without the support of the rest of the team at the Houston Airport System, we simply could not have made this happen. I am so proud and so thankful for um, their effort. When we first began developing the 400-acre Houston Spaceport, we had a vision of bringing together, and we had a, a vision of bringing together a cluster of aviation and aerospace enterprises that would support the future of commercial space flight. We wanted an urban center for collaboration and ideation, a place where the brightest minds in the world could work closely together to lead us into the next frontier of space exploration. For the last two years, we have been busy building the Houston Spaceport's foundational infrastructure to attract those bright minds. And today we have completed phase one, uh, making 153 acres ready for build out. Just days ago, vital infrastructure like roads, utilities, communication systems, and access to the airfield um, have been, were completed. This now allows us to anchor tenants um, like Axiom to build their headquarters and the facilities that they need to produce the products and services to further explore. And today we are announcing that they will. They will build their corporate headquarters, they will build their um, operational, they will build their uh, manufacturing and assembly facilities here in Houston to build this next generation, the future of the International Space Station, a commercial International Space Station. Their partnership is a giant leap to us realizing this city's legacy as space city um, and we are not done by a long shot. We believe this will be the catalyst for other enterprises to join this exciting time at Houston Spaceport. There is truly no limit to what can be accomplished, what can be developed at the Houston airport system. And the future is not only bright, the Houston spaceport is already at the heart of America's effort to sport, uh, sport, explore space. As we speak, our tenants are already supporting space initiatives. Intuitive Machines, for example, is building the Nova C spacecraft, a nearly 13 foot lunar tall lander that will deliver cargo to the moon um, as early as the late 2021. We're also developing and testing propulsion systems that will enhance and endeavor our return to the moon. All the while, our uh, official education and training partner, San Jacinto College, is developing the talent um, for the future. Brenda Hillier, who is here with us today, is a champion of the Edge Center at the Houston Spaceport, which offers aerospace training and a path to careers in the aerospace industry under the instructors who work at the top of their fields. This will ensure that Axiom 
space and other companies can not only recruit the best of the best, but assure that they will remain the best. One last note, we are still um, in the process of finalizing a memorandum of agreement, and we are looking forward to having that completed shortly and, and take this um, and brief the, the council so that we can get this underway. As I said before, our next speaker saw the value in the Houston Spaceport and Axiom Space Partnership. Bob Harvey is the president and Chief Executive Officer of the Greater Houston Partnership. Please help me welcome Bob Harvey. Okay. Well, Council Member Cisneros, nice to see you, Mayor. Great. Bob, Mike, Mario, what an exciting day. Uh, my name is Bob Harvey. I'm the President and CEO of the Greater Houston Partnership. And we are the regional economic development organization that works every day to not only recruit game-changing companies to Houston, but also to support some really exciting homegrown companies like Axiom Space. I want to first thank Mike and the Axiom Space team for your incredible commitment to Houston and your recognition of the incredible space-focused workforce we have in the Clear Lake area, area and beyond. Mike, I know you spent most of your career here in Houston, and you know firsthand the strength of Houston's talent base. I also want to congratulate Bob Mitchell of the Bay Area Houston Economic Partnership for being a stalwart champion for this region. And Bob, your leadership in positioning Houston as a leader in commercial space has been remarkable. Today's announcement is a game changer for Houston as we position our region as one of the leading uh, next generation tech hubs in the US and throughout the world. Each person speaking here today has reflected back on Houston's past success in manned spaceflight, and it is a record we should be proud of and continue to build upon through our partnership at NASA and specifically our friends at Johnson Space Center. Just last week, we hosted NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine for our inaugural State of Space event. And at the event, Jim spoke about the incredible work happening at JSC and said NASA was, I'll, I'll quote Jim, Fortunate to be in a city like Houston, a city that produces talent, that has an amazing workforce, and a dedication to education and to the STEM fields, close quote. With the development of the Houston Spaceport and the vision of Mayor Turner and Airport System Director Mario Diaz and leaders from JSC and private industry, we're leveraging Houston's many advantages and are focused on the future of aerospace and the potential of what many expect will be a trillion dollar 21st century commercial space economy. And this is not an isolated announcement. For the last several years, leaders across the Houston region have been working to position Houston as a next generation tech hub. We've made incredible progress in these last several years with the development of Rice University's Midtown Innovation District, centered around the ION, the success of the HX Venture Fund, along with the expansion of major tech companies like Microsoft and Google Cloud and AWS. Plus, we just had the announcement just a few weeks ago by one of the founding companies of Silicon Valley, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, that they were relocating their global headquarters from California. So Axiom Space announcement today builds on that momentum, and I believe it'll be a catalyst not only for the growth in the commercial space sector, but also for advancing Houston, our broader technology and innovation ecosystem. This is a great day for Houston and for the Houston Spaceport. I look forward to standing here with you, Mayor Turner, for many exciting announcements to come. So it's now my pleasure to turn this podium over to my very good friend, Bob Mitchell, President and CEO of the Bay Area Houston Economic Partnership. Bob? Thank you, Bob. I really appreciate that. And Mayor, thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak today. This is a very, very exciting time. Again, my, my name is Bob Mitchell. I'm the President of the Bay Area Houston Economic Partnership, an economic development organization just in Southeast Houston, right across the street from the NASA Johnson Space Center. On behalf of our board and 260 member companies, I'd like to be among the very first to congratulate you, Mike, and your whole team at Axiom Space. This is a great day for your company. It's terrific seeing all your hard work culminating in the announcement today. We also want to congratulate our friends at the Houston Airport System, the Houston City Council, Mayor Sylvester Turner, for the innovative vision you are now implementing at the Houston Spaceport. The Spaceport was established in 2015 
And it is so nice to see that the deliberate strategic steps taken back then to conceive and develop Houston's new bold achievement are coming to fruition now with an ever increasing momentum of aerospace activity. The synergy is already apparent. The spaceport campus between strong industry partners, its world-class training and academic providers, and its far-sighted community investors are, are bearing fruit and will only get stronger. For 45 years now, the Barry Houston Economic Partnership has worked very closely with the aerospace community in Houston to help the very important industry cluster continue to be successful. We watched with pride as the International Space Station was built in space, and we still marvel at all the great medical research that is being conducted in zero-G environment today. Axiom Space is now taking all those great accomplishments and taking it to the next level in Axiom Station. We're excited and proud today as ever and can't wait to see this new beautiful Axiom Space Complex come out of the ground at the Houston Spaceport. Mike, I remember a few years ago, you and I were sitting next to each other in Washington, D.C. testifying before the Senate Committee of Science on the importance of maintaining the ISS and making sure that they continue to stay funded through 2024. And here we are today with this wonderful announcement about Axiom Station. Mike, I think the best is yet to come. Congratulations again, and Godspeed with your plans moving forward. Mayor. Look, thank you to all of you. Uh, as I close, I certainly want to acknowledge Councilmember Carlos Cisneros. I kind of figured she would be here with her emphasis on education and with all of these outstanding colleges and universities being here. I want Houstonians, especially our youngest, to know that these opportunities will impact generations to come. And in just a few years, when the Axiom Station is in Earth's low orbit, uh, you will be able to look up and know that a space station built in Houston by Houston professionals is circling the Earth. All I want for Christmas is Axiom Space Station right here in the city of Houston. And that wish has come true. So uh, what an exciting time uh, to be in the city of Houston. And at this point, uh, you can direct your questions to any of these persons uh, up here, if you have any. Uh, yes, Mayor, I have some questions from the Chronicle. Is Axiom receiving incentive money from the city? No. Okay. Uh, when could city council approve this? As soon as they get it to me, it'll be on city council probably the next week, you know. But uh, I would say fairly soon. Fairly soon, yeah. And last one is, how much will it cost to build a new headquarters? Who wants to take that? Um, does she want to come? And, yeah, we, we, we can maybe tag team on it. Um, you it, know, I, what I would say is that um, we are, uh, uh, Axiom Space is really thinking about doing the layout for this facility. We've just reached agreement in principle on the terms. It's 14 acres. Um, I think Action now needs to bring in the architects, start to lay it out, and to figure out um, how much of office space, how much of high bay hangar. I can tell you it's 14 acres, and I think all the square footage as calculated is about 386,000 square feet. So this is a sizable facility. Um, but I don't know, maybe Mike, you might want to add some details to this, but. I don't know that we're far along enough in the conceptual design to really be speaking to this. Yeah, that, that's why we're struggling a little bit. Um, we have talked about what it can do. It'll have a very large uh, high bay area, kind of unique uh, in Houston, so that these modules can be brought in. They can be uh, raised and moved around and turned around and allow us to manufacture. There's a number of manufacturing areas uh, that will be added. There'll be a mid bay area. We'll have a hangar for training jets uh, for private aircraft. Uh, we'll have a tarmac for very large transport aircraft. Of course, there'll be a facility to house about uh, 100 employees uh, and another, a number of other uh, support structures that'll be necessary uh, for the team. So we're, as Mario said, we're really still sorting out uh, with the developer what the design exactly looks like and accommodates, and then after that, we'll be able to talk about what the cost would be. All right, any other any other questions?
Yes, sir. Hey there, Bill Waddell from AccuWeather. When folks hear about a spaceport in Houston, and this is a question for you, for Axiom, in the future, a couple of years from now, you know, people hear a spaceport, is the hopes that there will be some form of launches, you know, right here in Houston? And also just tell us about the focus for the important research up there. What can be done and researched up in space that really can't be done here on the ground? So uh, Mario can talk about uh, launches from here. Our, right now, uh, our plan is to launch our spacecraft on, a, we can launch on a variety of vehicles, uh, but we envision them launching uh, from Florida. The, the uh, uh, likely contenders will be launched out of Florida. Uh, the future of what Ellington can support is something Mario can deal with. From a science and research and manufacturing standpoint, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a dissertation to talk about all that and how we do it, but it's a, there's a number of, of uh, business streams, some that are today are viable, others that are viable you know, five years from now, and then others are viable 20 years from now, but research will always be there. Manufacturing will probably be the biggest thing in 15 years. We'll all look back and look at what's going on on orbit relative to manufacturing. We expect to be building purpose-built modules for companies who are building, you know, when you're manufacturing something, you can't really be on a platform that's serving people and other things. So we expect a lot of infrastructure that needs to be built to support them uniquely, uh, which is part of our charter of what we do. Um, so very near term, you're going to see a lot of work going on in uh, research, flight opportunities for private astronauts and countries that today want to collaborate with the United States but really can't because they can't get access to ISS, which we can provide. And then over time, you'll see the business, uh, those businesses will grow, but we see that manufacturing will probably be one of the largest areas uh, that we'll be serving as, as time goes by. I hope that kind of describes it. So as to the type of uh, launches that we can uh, have at the Houston Spaceport, let me, there are three types, three categories of launches. Let me start with the first category X. And this is the type of launch into space where you have a, an aircraft that is able to um, travel in space, but it's got two type of propulsion systems. It's got the traditional turbines to take it up to a certain height. And then you have the rockets that kick in because after a certain amount of, of altitude, you run out of oxygen. So um, that's the first type. Yes, we can handle those type of, of spacecraft, aircraft, and uh, we look forward to that. Then there's um, what we call Category Y, and these are the vertical launch. And all I can say is um, we want to assure the people of Houston, and especially in Clear Lake, that you won't ever be sitting at your table at 9 o'clock in the morning trying to have a cup of coffee when a Falcon 9 takes off. When those nine Merlin engines kick in, you will be rattling in your home. We're not going to have those kinds. And then the third is the straddle long jerk approach. This, this is a carrier that has um, slung under it a, a spacecraft that will be going into space. It's taken up kind of like the Bell um, um, 10 or the X, uh, X1, where it goes up to maybe 40, 50,000 square feet, uh, 40, 50,000 feet in the air and simply gets dropped. The engines kick in, it goes into suborbital space. I was going to say the future is going to be hypersonic and supersonic travel. Uh, and that, that is one of the, pro uh, we got projects like that right now that we're working on, building the type of uh, aircraft that will go from Houston to New York in 30 minutes, from Houston to England in an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, those are the type of uh, other types of uh, launches that we're going to have here. Thank you. Okay, let me, then let me just close by saying this. I'm excited by many things. I am certainly excited by the collaboration that will be taking place with our colleges and universities, community college, between San Jacinto, Texas Southern, University of Houston, Clear Lake, Rice University, uh, the collaboration that's going to be taking place uh, at Ellington Field is exciting. And so that's, that's number one. Number two, um, and let me go specifically to, uh, I think the Houston Chronicle editorial had an editorial uh, in the last week about training the workforce right here in the city of Houston. Well, that's exactly uh, what we are addressing. We are training the workforce right here in the city of Houston so that we don't have to import. We're training the students right here for the future opportunities that we are creating uh, right here in the city of Houston. 
And then the other thing that I want to focus on, and Bob Harvey touched on it, uh, the ecosystem that we have been building with startups, technology, innovation. Uh, this simply adds to it. And so it's all coming in alignment uh, to, work, to what we all have been working on for years. Uh, this just takes it to another level. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we're focusing on Axiom, but what we have been also talking about is what will Axiom becomes like an anchor. initiated because of Axiom's presence. And when you're talking about 400 plus acres at Ellerton Field, uh, what's taking place here, intuitive machines, uh, when you add uh, the creation of more than a thousand jobs, the other businesses that will be spurred along, uh, that will help to further build out this ecosystem uh, at Ellerton Field. So this is, this is just, in a sense, this is just the beginning. Uh, it's good news, especially in a very challenging year. And what it demonstrates is that uh, in this city, working directly with the business community, we are creating the atmosphere and the right environment such that as we come out of the pandemic, we will be, to use this expression, we will take off uh, in, the, in the city of Houston. And you start that preparation even when you're in the midst of this pandemic. So what an exciting uh, way to end, council member, to end our year. So let me thank the Greater Houston Partnership. Let me thank the Bay Area Economic Council. Let me thank uh, uh, Mario and his entire team, Houston Airport System. Of course, let me thank Axiom and all of those affiliated with what's taking place there. Um, and, and of course, I can't do anything without the council members and, and their support. Uh, but this is, a, this is a good day in the city of Houston. And let me just close by saying uh, on another note, uh, the numbers, just to give me the numbers, let me give you the numbers today, 343 people who have, been, who have contracted the virus in the city of Houston, uh, which when you look at the other numbers, three, and it's something when you, you can almost rejoice on 343. Uh, but, and then only adding one person uh, and that's one person too many, but one person who has died as a result of COVID-19. So uh, let me remind people as we move forward, uh, you know, be very mindful of your behavior. I'm asking you to join with all of us to work together uh, to uh, uh, peak causes, I mean, to blunt the progression of this virus and then to work to start moving it down. And if we can do it even in the holiday season, uh, that means even brighter days ahead. So let me just ask you to join with the rest of us. But at the same time, let me thank Houstonians uh, across the board, individual businesses and all, who have done what we have asked you to do. Uh, and because of that, our numbers are not as bad as what's reported across the country. They're still not where we want them to be. But I certainly want to thank Houstonians for responding. As you do your final days of shopping, and I'm not telling people not to go to the stores. Uh, I'm simply saying just do it safely, okay? And avoid the large, you know, if you go into a store and it's crowded, just back up, find another store. I went out the other day. Uh, one of the stores was a little bit crowded. I kind of backed out, went to another store, got a better deal, you know? <laughs> so patience is a virtue, okay? And if you do it safely, I think you'll be rewarded, okay? So just, just be safe and be responsible. Having said that, enjoy your holidays, and then we'll work together to, to see you on the other side of the year. Mary? Okay, well, let me excuse everybody, uh, and I won't hold you on this. And did y'all need a did y'all need a Spanish translation on any of this? We, yeah, he he said we we're gonna do it after, right? Oh, okay, okay. So I was gonna just give you a paragraph or two, but uh, I'll, I'll defer to Arturo. Okay. All right. Is there a question on, on COVID related? Yes, Mayor. The the COVID restrictions applied uh, implemented in South Texas, like Galveston County, can that later apply to Houston? I think it's, uh, it's based on when it reaches a, a certain level, 
uh, that there's a pause in the rollout uh, that the governor put forth. Uh, we haven't met the, uh, the, that element right now in Houston Harris County. Uh, that's why we are urging people to, um, uh, to be mindful that everyone can participate in blunting the progression. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, if we, if we reach a certain matrix, uh, then it certainly could apply. I don't think we're there now. Uh, during the summer, for example, I would tell you we had more than 2,400 people in our hospitals because of COVID-19. Uh, As of this morning, for example, that number's a little over 1,400, so we're about 1,000 below where we were during the summer. Uh, but we don't want it to go much, no, we don't want it to go higher. We want to blunt it, and then we want that numbers, those numbers to start coming down. We want the positivity rate to come down. We're at 11.2. I would love for us next week to report that we're at 10%, and then starting to move, starting to move down. So uh, the reproduction rate, the number, uh, right as of this morning, that number was like 1.07. It needs to be below one. So there are a number of, of elements that, um, uh, that we need to bring down, uh, but, and it's going to take us all working together to do, to do that. So we're not at that point as the other counties, but at the same time, you know, we're not that far away yet either. And the last one is, do you know when your number will be called to get the vaccine? Well, I hope they call my number soon because I'm ready. <laughs> uh, I meet some of the requirements. Uh, I suspect it could be it could be probably within a week or so. It's what it's what it's what uh, I anticipate. Uh, Dr. Purse and Director Williams um, have already alerted me that my that my number and the time is coming up. And what I've said to them is that uh, uh, when they say it is my turn, I intend to do it very publicly because um, I've run into many people, even friends of mine who have uh, said that they are reluctant to take it, uh, and especially to, in, in communities of color. It is important for people to take it. It benefits everyone. Uh, so uh, I suspect uh, I will be taking it um, probably within, uh, probably sometime next week is what I anticipate. Okay? And I'll do it. If I could do it here, I'd take it right, do it right here, you know? That's fine. Mary said, when I, you know, for me, she said I need to take a double dose. You know, I want them to hit me in both arms. Okay, that's that's how that's how how much I want I I'm, I want to encourage people to to take it. Uh, if the Arturo, Arturo, if you'll just come in and and I think they want you to cover the axiom announcement and to speak about it in Spanish. And I want you to know I've, I've got my uh, Spanish tutor, so if you miss anything, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to catch, I'm gonna catch you. Muy, muy buenas tardes, uh, bienvenidos. Uh, primero que nada, aprovecho esta oportunidad para agradecer a las universidades que están aquí representadas, para agradecer al alcalde de la ciudad de Houston, al director del el sistema de aeropuertos de Houston y a todos los que nos acompañan. Es un placer. El anuncio que acabamos de hacer es de mayor impacto para la ciudad de Houston. La compañía Axiom acaba de anunciar que la estación comercial espacial eh, será construida en su totalidad en la ciudad de Houston, específicamente en el puerto espacial de Houston o el Houston Spaceport. Esto eh, se dice fácil, pero es sin duda un acontecimiento de gran relevancia. Ellos van a traer mil empleos a la ciudad de Houston que van a ser empleos de alta paga y van a beneficiar a todos los um, integrantes, a todos los uh, habitantes de la ciudad de Houston. No podríamos estar más excitados por eso que está pasando ahora. Eh, el puerto espacial de Houston sigue eh, progresando. Solamente en diciembre 18 terminamos la construcción eh, Hicimos una inversión de 21 millones de dólares para construir toda la infraestructura que permite que compañías como Axion y otras compañías vengan a llevar y hacer sus negocios en la ciudad de Houston, de nuevo con un impacto directo en la gente que vive en esta ciudad. Algo que tengo que agregar es también que todas estas compañías de aeroespacio y de aviación requerirán 
de empleos con talento y es por eso que el día de hoy ustedes están viendo aquí una presencia eh, de las universidades. Ellos son la, la elemento clave que nos va a permitir entrenar a la juventud de Houston para que se queden en Houston, para que vivan en Houston y para que sigan apoyando el desarrollo de esta ciudad. No podría dejar de eh, eh, también de observar que San Jacinto College empezó esto efectivamente ya hace un año. Por el momento, San Jacinto College ha creado un, un uh, programa al que los estudiantes de la ciudad de Houston pueden acceder ya en este momento. El programa está siendo uh, ofrecido por San Jacinto College y estudiantes que estén interesados en aprender más o trabajar en aeroespacio, en aviación, solo lo que tienen que hacer es consultar a San Jacinto para, para trabajar en esto. Todas las demás universidades, por supuesto, están también trabajando con nosotros para crear los ingenieros y el talento que es necesario para apoyar a compañías como Axiom. Muchas gracias y muy buenas tardes. And what Arturo said, this is an exciting announcement in the city of Houston that will transform the city for the best. He mentioned all of those colleges and universities and just said the best is yet to come in 2021. That's what he said in, in, in an abbreviated version. <laughs> all right, so we're going to take some quick pictures. Come on. My, uh,